Let's do it. Let's do it. Hello and welcome everyone to the GGG podcast. I, as always, am Paul and I am joined by my co-host, Phil. Uh, We got a good show for you today. Lots of, very similar to last week, lots of news, uh, but not a lot of big stories, but lots of little announcements. So that'll be good to to get into. But before we do get into that, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel or over on any of our podcast uh, audio only listening outlets like Spotify or iTunes. Phil, what have you been up to this week? Have you had a chance to game and... What have those games been? <laughs> Paul, I've come here to talk to you today about something ser- very serious. Oh, I, I'm over video gaming. I'm just on the grind now. I'm all about drop shipping NFTs <laughs> and maximizing my grind set right. uh, and my mindset. Um, <laughs> my entire family was mauled by a pack of bears. <laughs> you know what? That taught me to be strong. Um, and so I'm selling a special protein powder. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> bear mauled my family. <laughs> um, Whew. I I haven't been playing much. <laughs> no, I, I played some Fallout Four. Uh, I, I downloaded it when they did the play or the PlayStation Five upgrade. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know that game is charming. It's got a lot of little foibles, but it's charming. <laughs> That's a good game. Uh, yeah. A, but outside of that, it has been like uh, just you know a lot of moving stuff. Still, it's, you'd think it's just going to be over in a day. It's not. It no, never is. No, <laughs> moving ends like a year after you've moved in. That's yeah. when, when the yeah. last box has been unpacked. That's that's when you're moved. <laughs> like, that's what it's. Uh, you're, you're still that... in the where the hell is the spatula phase? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like why isn't it in the kitchen? <laughs> That is my life currently, and it's uh, it's that's that's the game I've been playing is past Phil versus current Phil, right? Uh, and it's past Phil is winning, but no Fallout Four has been a really fun thing to like step back into. I had that Fallout itch after watching the TV show, and ooh, it's it's working. Um, I'm hanging out with dog meat immediately. Yeah. As every other companion comes up, I'm like back up. My dog's here. Um, yeah. But yeah, what right have you on. been playing? Um, well, um, I, so I, I, I've been, I played a little bit of Helldivers, uh, played some more Stellaris, uh, I think I booted up Fallout, uh, for a little bit, um, and then closed it, um, but I actually, uh, subscribed to Xbox Game Pass for the first time in maybe like two years, I want to say, um, because I wanted to check out Manor Lords, and uh, Remnant 2 is also on Game Pass, and I've been wanting to check that out as well. So, uh, so yeah, so I, I actually I have not played Remnant 2 yet, although I have downloaded it. Uh, but I actually got a good uh, good amount of time to check out Manor Lords, and it's 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 pretty it's it's all right. <laughs> for for me um i just the the biggest problem right now with it and this has been the sentiment of a lot of uh you know streamers and gamers online is just that it just it's very early access and i personally i need a tutorial for this game and there's no tutorial yeah. there's there's tool tips um uh, mm-hmm. like when you go through things but like i need a tutorial where you just tell me what i'm supposed to be doing in any capacity or or something just just something something like oh this is a little intro campaign and this isn't the main game but you, this is like you play through this for 3 hours and that's the that's the campaign and it's just there to teach you how to play the game and what you should be focusing on cuz like mm-hmm. i really like ha- struggled with like what am i supposed to be doing what are the early buildings i'm supposed to be investing in where are my resources which ones do what like just that that basic stuff and i feel like in other games like civilization or frost punk usually you'll get like a notification be like this thing happened and then you click on that notification and then it takes you to that thing but in manor lords it does not do that it gives you a notification and it's like your people are homeless i'm like okay let's figure that out and then i click on it it doesn't do anything so it's like oh you don't have to do anything about it we're just letting you know we're just Uh, yeah (laughs) this is just a problem on a list (laughs) you know 
I did get to play about an hour of Manor Lords, and I had a similar thing where I was like, there's a little food icon up there. I don't know if that means why people are starving or if we have a food buff right now. Mm. Um, <laughs> game, I would like you to tell me. Or maybe I'm just supposed to figure it out. Uh, but that said, I think, like, you know, the lack of direction was a bit tough for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it, all of the things they have going for it, like just the way the buildings are set up, the way that like people sort of automatically start doing stuff, the the graphics, I'm into all of it. I just kind of need a better direction for it. So I think, you know, it's one of those things where it's in early access. So I understand right. that it's not fully done yet. Um, and it's cool just to see what the engine can do. But uh, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm at the place in my life anymore where I'm going to like invest a bunch of time in an early access game and just like play around and see what the engine can do like yeah see what the full the full capacity of it you know yeah this this was this was clearly like a game that like if i was working at ign um like yeah i'd, I'd have to get into i'd have to figure this game out because it's my job but i just would not recommend it to and it's just not ready. It's just not ready yet. You need a yeah. tutorial. If you're going to have a game like mm -hmm. that, you have to have a tutorial to tell me what I'm doing. So, <laughs> yeah. We're just sliding it back in the oven. That's cool. Let's say, you know, game yeah. pass. Yeah. Uh, it will be worth it for Remnant 2. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> right on. Well, then I'm, I do not regret my purchase for that reason. So, <laughs> Yeah. All right. So let's get into this week's uh, game releases. A couple little things. One, which is a re-release, but hey, it's on PS5 and that's Sea of Thieves uh, has officially launched today, the day that we are recording this. So that's very exciting. And it's also, I believe they're doing seasonal content, uh, which they have been they have been doing in the past. Right, Phil? They have. There's a bunch of events like Pirates of the Caribbean events. I believe there's a Monkey Island event that's all been mm -hmm. seasonal as well as like stuff you can buy cosmetics for your ship and for your pirate. So Right. But for this, I believe I've seen like season one is coming out today. So I guess they're going like one by one through the seasons now. And that's that's how they're doing it. Um, pretty cool or at least uh, maybe that's how it is on ps5 so you know mm -hmm. that's exciting uh for people who have been dying to play sea of thieves and you really want to play it on playstation um it's coming out today exciting glad for i'm sure there will be a lot of a lot of kids who are very happy who have been dying to play that with their friends it's i think it's an interesting thing because like sea of thieves is something that I wanted an Xbox for. Like, mm. when I first saw it, I was like, this almost makes it worth the purchase. Um, and then... Uh, and then I got it on PC, like most people did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got it on Game Pass. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, this is really great. Like, every time I play it with my friends, I have a fun time. I'm sure there are people out there who don't have, don't have the same, like, I've got to play it, so I'll get it when it's available on PC, or, like, I'll find a way to make it available who just right. have PlayStations. And I think this will be a lot of fun for them, provided they get like a group of four of their friends together to play it, because I feel like that's the best way. Yeah. So if you've got like your normal gaming group and you're all interested in some piratey good times, this is that it's a very, it's almost like an opposite, opposite of a hell divers experience where you all have to like really coordinate to barely survive. You kind of do have to coordinate in this one, but it's very different and very silly and like, I guess in a, in a sense, like Helldivers, it's also more fun to mess with your friends. Like, yeah. you just drink a, a bunch of alcohol until you run up and vomit <laughs> on them while they're steering the ship. That's a lot of fun. Sure. <laughs> well, and you know, also you have that competitive uh, edge to it, you know, where, you know, you have other teams competing for loot and uh, being pirates. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a good buddy game. If you got a group of friends and you haven't tried uh, Sea of Thieves before, big, big recommend. So... Mm. So yeah, easy recommend. Yes, happy that's out. Um, all right, so the next game we got is a smaller game, a Tarkov like game, and that is Gray Zone Warfare is releasing today. Um, you know, this is a you know heavily military s uh, simulation uh, type game. So if you're into that, uh, this is this is probably right up your alley. Probably worth checking out. Something I really like 
uh, about this game's launch at the very least is how cheap it is so the mm-hmm. the basic version of the game is only ten dollars which i think is fantastic and then they have a couple of other um uh oh so, sorry i'm reading this graphic wrong my mistake so the basic version of the game is 35 dollars. so it's releasing at a 35 dollar place and then it has a uh uh, different different versions and they have a supporter edition kind of like what we were talking about with deep rock and we talked about that that ex uh blizzard ceo saying you know developers should be tipped it's like you want to be tipped have a supporter edition let's do that <laughs> so yeah yeah that's i think that's the right way to do it because you're literally supporting them more <laughs> yes exactly they're and they're being for forthcoming with that so, uh, but yeah, the game is launching at thirty-five dollars, so even uh, cheaper than Hell Divers. So I think that's a that's a good place to launch, and um, you know it comes with you know the other editions come with lots of stuff. But I'm not personally a military uh, simulation guy, but I do know a good friend of mine uh, who plays a lot of these uh, style type games. Um, have you ever been in a military shooter? Like not not necessarily like Call of Duty or Battlefield, but more of like a SOCOM or anything like that. Or... It's never been my my bag. I think maybe the closest is like Rainbow Six. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's like adjacent because you're doing very like you, the stealth is a part of it, and like the procedural movement is a part of it. Um, but I've never been big into it. This game does look really good, but it's it's one of those things that like if you've got a team of people who are very into getting things practically perfect and like let's say you're getting a little bit tired you and your squad are getting tired of playing call of duty uh in the open world right this is a great like change of pace where you have to like realistically be like oh yeah if i'm sprinting around they're gonna hear me or like my accuracy is gonna be absolutely nothing uh so yeah this seems like a pretty cool option for for those people into that i don't think it's my cup of tea I think this is, if it were on Game Pass, I would at least give it a shot type of game. But. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but as far as I know, it's just a Steam release today. Um, so, yeah. But I think most most of the people who are playing, like, the simulation type games are going to be playing on PC anyway. So, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's dive into the news. Um, got some new... Thank you. Yes. Ex- excellent form there, Phil. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so... Diablo 4, uh, we're going to be getting season four in about two weeks. And uh, Diablo's uh, active players have been, you know, really kind of bottoming out. People haven't been interested in playing the game, especially with the amount of microtransactions and and, uh, whatnot. And so season four, Blizzard has been doing, um, has been making an effort to be like, okay, we're listening to what people have been saying. We're going to do less microtransactions, even though they haven't really yet. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see if words are louder than actions. Uh, but, yeah, they they specifically said that they are trying to focus on quality as opposed to quantity, uh, mm. which is something that I, you know, that's a statement that I love. I hope that they actually do that. Uh, but for me, with looter games in general... I think there is this, or there, there has been in the, this this in the past where it's this obsession of quantity, um, like you know we've talked about like with Destiny or Borderlands. It's like when you have thousands and thousands and thousands of guns in the game, like which ones are actually special, and it's you know not many, um, mm. and so hopefully in this new season they're looking to really up the quality with certain items and also not give you as many tedious tasks to do while participating Mm -hmm. in the season because there's usually like a lot of oh you got to work on this and you got to work on this and you got to work on that and it's like diablo is grindy enough as it is don't add extra grind to the grind so Mm -hmm. any chance you uh check this update out phil any any possible chance i mean hey I've got it on my P- PC. <laughs> I was going to say PlayStation. I've got it on my PC. Mm-hmm. Um, I can re-download it at any time and give it another go. This may be... I think I still have like a floating season pass to put to use like for a season. Maybe season four will be the one. Mm. Um, 
it's launching May 14th. Really what it comes down to, and I think we are kind of in that lull, is what else is out at that time. Diablo 4 has always been one of those games that I'm like, I'm going to come back to this someday. I'm going to come back, play another character, do another run. Right. Um, maybe this is it, because I do feel like I would be inclined to play if the grind wasn't so bad, especially at the end. Um, and if I was getting cool new items, all that stuff at a better clip, 100% in. But it's all to be seen whether they actually did the thing that they said they're doing or not. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, I don't trust Blizzard uh, <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't you, right? Uh, yeah. I don't, I mean, yeah, I don't really don't have a lot of faith in Blizzard right now either. Um, so, yeah, it's, this is going to be a wait and see. This, you know, these are all nice sentiments. These, these all look good on Twitter and uh, throughout the online gamer sphere. But, you know, let, let's see when it actually comes out, if it's less tedious and you've, been, you've worked on quality over quantity. So, yeah. So, yeah. All right. Uh, do you want to take this one, next one, Phil? I do. I do. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I was a big Sims guy. Mm. Uh, and there is a Sims competitor, Life by You. It is kind of given everyone uh, some pretty excited feelings in that space because we've been at a lack of a new Sims for a while. Yes. It's got a scheduled release date uh, entering early access on June 4th. So one month from, uh, uh, I guess, probably when this episode goes live. We typically go live on Fridays, uh, Saturdays. Thurs no. Thursdays-ish. Th Thursdays, usually. Th then a month and two days. <laughs> uh, um but yeah, no, I'm pretty excited about it. I've heard about this a couple of different times, and it looks to just pick up where The Sims kind of left off before EA became like the the, the death nail uh, for all things Sims. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I feel like The Sims, uh, Sims Two, Sims Three were like such big things that everybody played. Yeah, I talked to a lot of women who I didn't think were gamers like way back in the day from our generation. They're like, oh, yeah, I spent hours playing The Sims. Right. Um, and I, I think we don't really have anything like this because a lot of Sim elements have been put into other games. It's exciting to see a game that's just about like making your person have a life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I am. I am very excited about this. I mm -hmm. like again, I've had a very similar experience to what you just described. Uh, I knew a, so many people who played The Sims, and I have been so disappointed. You know, there have been all these, you know, uh, rumors and some stories. Oh, they're working on Sims 5, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, like, how long has it been since, since Sim 4 came out? And then they mm -hmm. just got obsessed with, like, we're just going to make DLCs for this indefinitely. And, mm -hmm. and like, we're not going to make a new game. And I think that this genre of game has really kind of gone away. And mm -hmm. and that's largely because I think Sims took over the market. And then they really, they kind of sat on their laurels <laughs> and were like, we're not going to do anything with this other than release a DLC pack every um, six months with a, with some new items and a new phase of life to play through. Uh, now there's vampires. Ooh, <laughs> that was, yeah. That was literally one. <laughs> you know, now there's pets. Maybe there should have been pets when the game launched. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So I am very excited that at the very least, The Sims are going to have a competitor. Um, yeah. That's going to be like, hey, you guys really haven't done anything. So we're going to we're going to come in and try and do our own thing. And we're going to put a modern spin on it. And it's been interesting to see Life by You uh, grow, um, is, you know, starting out as a mod. Uh, and and so and that's really interesting because sometimes like look at Dota. Dota was a mod um, sure. as old as that is now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited. And, you know, worst case scenario, maybe it shakes the tree of of the makers of Sims of Maxis. And uh, they actually try to make a new game or put something out or do something. So I'm all I, for I it. I feel like our next Sims game is going to be a meta quest game where you play first person Sims in VR. Um, and it's going to miss the mark entirely. <laughs> that's that's yeah. my big guess. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, people are pretty good about speaking sim. So true. Katy Perry has an entire song. Uh, I think it's Friday night that she sings in Simlish for one of the games. I think yeah, it was yeah, released yeah. in a DLC pack. Um, yeah, I, I, I really want to see what Maxis does, like you're saying, to respond to this. Uh, from the trailer of the game, it looks like you can kind of go outside, which is something that you could semi do in the Sims games. Yeah, but but now you can actually explore the town and like follow your simulated person. Mm-hmm. It's not a sim for legal reasons. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I'm excited. June fourth will be an interesting uh, uh, early access again. It is crazy how many games are launching in early access, like especially ones that we talk about now. Or like, yeah, hey, okay, here's a little taste. I mean, I feel like if you're not a AAA game, that's just the that's the industry standard now. It's your, you know, early access for everything. So, and I think that gives these indie developers some leeway of like, we know it's not done, we know it's not a complete pr- uh, product. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm just, we'll see how much it launches at. You know, if yeah. you're gonna be like Grey Zone Warfare, we launch at thirty five dollars. I think that that's fine, you know, but n- none of these 60, 70, 80 dollar early access launches. That's not reasonable. Uh, um, unless you're coming with like Baldur's Gate level heat, which I think is probably the reason that a lot of people are doing this. Sure. Is because they saw like Baldur's Gate was the big game of the year last year for everyone except us. Um, <laughs> it was a big, we, we liked it. <laughs> we liked it. Yeah. We liked it. I played the whole damn thing. But uh, what, I, what I mean to say is. Uh, that I feel like that set a precedent, um, and I think it is kind of cool that because those of us who play in early access are kind of beta testing to get a discounted rate on the game, you know. Yeah. Especially as it grows, it gets more ambitious. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm really excited to uh, to play this and just to like probably lose a solid day. <laughs> I just like, well, I'm just gonna see what it's like. Yeah. And then. Hopefully there's yeah. a tutorial so you know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why do I need a tutorial on how to live, Paul? Well, you could go outside. So, so. <laughs> oh, uh, hell no to that. I need a tutorial. <laughs> All right. Um, so pressing right along, my favorite game ever, Starfield, is um, a little sarcastic for new viewers. Um, so Starfield, uh, we got some, we got a lot of interviews from Todd Howard over at Bethesda because of all of the the Fallout press that's been coming out, and he's been answering a lot of uh, Starfield questions because that's a good chunk of the resources that are still going on at Bethesda are working on continuing to update Starfield, uh, and also uh, the team is beginning to transition over into uh, the next Elder Scrolls. Thank Jeebus. Uh, so we will we will see we'll see how that goes. But for the meantime, uh, Starfield, there is a mod support beta uh, that is going around. It is not public, so you cannot get your hands on it quite yet. Uh, but for other studios who helped uh, with the game and some uh, people who are in the industry, uh, Bethesda is sending out. Um, some Starfield mod uh, betas to kind of streamline the process. And after they test it in that, then it's probably going to be rolled out to a public test and then finally just as a normal update uh, in Starfield. But he would give no, uh, um, you know, release date or commit to any kind of timeline for it. So that really is a bummer. Uh, But on the bright side... He did commit that the uh, DLC that's going to be coming out for Starfield that I technically already own because I bought the special edition of Starfield. (laughs) Um, So uh, Starfield Shattered Space, uh, the expansion is going to be coming out this fall, this year. I really hope that that's a date that they stick to. I don't know that it will be, um, but... Yeah, I am uh, hopeful for it and the things that it's going to be uh, adding. Oh, and one last little thing. Uh, They are going to be having a shipbuilding update coming later this week. So that's very exciting because the shipbuilding in Starfield needs an update badly. Um, I got to the point in the game where I had so much money that I wanted to, you know, make my fantasy um, starship and and have that all laid out and whatnot and i just kept running into issues 
um, that were no fault of my own. Uh, but and I believe I voiced this uh, to you, Phil, many, many, mm-hmm. many podcast episodes ago. But just like one of the simple one simple thing that kind of drive me crazy in the shipbuilding mechanic was you couldn't manually decide where like doors and hallways were. Yeah. Uh, um, which, and, th- and so like if I build a ship and it's three stories of ship, which is not really a, you know, a crazy thing to do in that game. Uh, mm-hmm. Like it, you can't tell it where to put the ladder to get from the second floor to the third floor. And so it huh. will randomly generate, where that is and i was really annoyed because i had to have like my captain's quarters and the main way to get up uh to the bridge was to go through my captain's quarters um which was really annoying and it's just like it'd be great if it went through the command center that i put right next to it (laughs) so so in hopes that it would be a staircase yeah. yeah. Also, like, get some, let's get some elevators or some floaty space thing. I'm tired of climbing mm-hmm. these slow ladders, uh, driving me crazy. But, so, but Paul, that's where they had <clears throat> hide the load screens, man. That's where uh, the all important load timing on our new SSD system. <laughs> I okay. I feel like Starfield. Um, I you know, I'm glad they did it. It does feel more like a joke now than it does a game, <laughs> um, and I'm going on. I'm going a bit hard today. Yeah, it feels more. It yeah, feels get down in the paint. More like what? a meme. Yeah, like I just like hey guys, don't do this. Um, stop, <laughs> stop doing Starfield. Uh, make just make more Fallout. Uh, hurry up with Elder Scrolls. Make a new engine. You know what? Take all the time that you're going to put into Starfield. Make a new engine. And don't call it Creation 3, because we know it'll be the same thing that was running uh, during Morrowind. Make something new. We're living in the year 2024. Um, I'm sick of seeing the people talk to me like this. <laughs> like, I, I but that's in Fallout 2 as, as, as well. Is, like, that's in it Sky- It's Every Bethesda game is like that. If they need a new engine that desperately, you it know, is, it like is all so the Fallout tough. games are getting such credit. It's like nobody remembers how glitchy all of those games were when they launched. Like True. it's and so for me, it's like I will criticize Starfield till the cows come home. But like I want I want them to fix the game because like, you know, like you're uh, you've been playing Fallout. Have you been having fun getting back into Fallout recently? Yeah, yeah. So like it's but well, is is that because it's been updated so much where it's at a place of no is it different no, no. no. it's it's just it's the same it's the same game I mean it's been updated for sure but it's I think just like the setting like the game knows what it wants to be hmm. pretty clearly um, and I felt like with Starfield it didn't quite have that same like handle on its tone sure um, that's that was the issue for me one of the other issues is like. The fact that you can't land on a planet without a loading screen. There's too many loading screens in that game. Yeah. Yes, there are. Yes. there. I, I think so. Like one big differentiating thing between Starfield and all of the other Bethesda games is so many of the Bethesda games are like, all right, you did the introduction. You're in the map. Go for it. And you just it's kind of about wandering. And that's very much like what Fallout Uh, feels like and like it's like Mm -hmm. wandering and seeing what you get into and starfield is like uh, what can i get into i have to go into all these menus to figure Mm -hmm. out where i'm going to for what loading screen and then i gotta get to that okay so i'm in the same galaxy but it didn't take me exactly there and so it's Mm -hmm. it's a bunch of menu stuff And Bethesda has always sucked at menus. Although I will say Fallout, out of any of the games, has the best menu system. Uh, The the, Pip-Boy is pretty good. Yeah, Yeah. the the Pip-Boy is the best one. But, like, you know, replaying Skyrim recently, hate the menus in Skyrim. Yeah, you can mod Mm -hmm. it, get Sky UI and stuff like that. But they are just... They do... Like, I don't know what it... what how those guys like working (laughs) like but they're just (laughs) i just like endless lists of everything that's how i organize my my stuff 
it's just one long scroll, and I just run the paper down. <laughs> like, I, it, there's no subdivisions, no nothing. It's just potato right next to Master Sword that could end the universe. Yeah, um, yeah no, I, 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 I would like. Um, I don't know. I, I think they kind of need a pretty massive, uh, just reshaping of what they do for their games because. I feel like they're sitting on their laurels. Um, mm. And that is kind of a problem. Like, you have all these really cool companies that are part of Bethesda. Uh, for example, the team that made Doom, um, uh, the, the Wolfenstein games. Like, you have this really cool identity within Bethesda. Uh, the, I believe the team that did... Um, oh, why can't I think of it? The, the Assassin's game. Dishonored. Dishonored, Okay. That's a Bethesda game as well. I believe right? so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that and pray. Like you have these really cool different ideas to mess around with. Maybe just make one of them a Vault Tech, and like let them make Fallout games and make uh, have the rest of your people working on your other big games. But just like you got something really special here. Uh, well, actually, that reminded me of a, a teeny tiny story uh, that we were talking about before we started recording, and that is that. Uh, Todd Howard was asked about like how soon we could expect a new Fallout game, and he he said that uh, there will be a Fallout game before Fallout Five that comes out. So like, could they be going back to Obsidian for you know New Vegas Two or you know like what you were just saying? Just could could they you know take another one of their teams and let them let them go ham with a Fallout game? I think realistically, it will probably be some sort of Fallout mobile game, <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> like the Vault game. Oh man, I I really wanted. Did you ever? You, did you get into uh, Fallout Shelter at any point? I did. It was actually really fun. Yeah, it it was really fun. It's just it was it always hit the uh, the microtransaction wall for me, of like mm -hmm. I can't really do anything because you want me to spend money on this and. And yeah. I refuse to do that on a spiritual level. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, like if you want to sell me a mobile game for nine ninety nine, I'll pay for it. But I don't want to have to get it buy into your game economy, and yeah. then at the end of the day, like spend God knows how much money. And but that's what so many companies are doing. Uh, I recently saw a statistic that showed that uh, half of the money made in the video game industry is from the mobile video game industry. Oh. And, and I believe it, it was actually just barely the majority. Like it was like 51 oh. or 52%, something like that. And that's because no. of those microtransactions. So Yeah. Um, and everybody has a phone in their pocket. Like it's Yeah. The reach is uh inescapable. So Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, let's uh let's get off of Bethesda's yeah. back um and let's let's, let's get press off of that on. thing. What else? What else we got? What else we got this week, Phil? Oh, I'm very excited about this. Uh, I recently had company, uh, some uh, girlfriend's family over, mm -hmm. and we were looking through something we could do together. And Jackbox came up, um, and I was like, "Oh man, I would love to play a Jackbox game." Mm -hmm. uh, and then today, there's a new announcement that the Jackbox Naughty Pack is being has just been announced. Yes. Um, I am super into that. It's basically a Jackbox game that is more adult themed. So, um, as much as you could just write a big old Harry, whatever Johnson, yeah, uh, yeah Johnson, <laughs> um, in in the contributing part of the game, it seems like their new set has a lot to do with like things that are uh, building towards that already. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that is pretty fun. Uh, it doesn't. It, launches later this year so yeah I, be I believe it's coming out this summer and i think it's it's a pack so it's like uh like if you bought like jack a jackpot jackbox games in the past if it's like jackbox party pack eight it's like there's a bunch of different there's a bunch of stuff that it comes with um mm -hmm. so it is the naughty pack that's it that's I, I think it's a great idea because i think there are a lot of like board game type things that have like you know where they're more social based and they're like, this is the naughty version of this game. And so this is the naughty version of Jackbox. And I think that's cool. But at the same time, kind of like what you were saying, I'm a little confused by it because I almost always, when I'm playing a Jackbox game, at some point, 
I take it to a naughty place. Um, mm-hmm. And so, so I don't, this is going to be very on the nose. Um, yeah. <laughs> or, or on the something else, I should say. <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, are you, you think you'll pick this up? Um, it de- It's just like any Jackbox thing. Uh, it depends on the games. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, like part of the charm in Jackbox is how silly it is. I think some of my favorite games are like Quiplash. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fibbage is always fun. But there's another really great one that is called TKO. It's yes. a t-shirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A knockout. And it's got this really fun mechanic where you draw like stuff and then you combine it with random uh, phrases that other people have made to make these t-shirts. They battle it out. You get points if something you contribute to one. Um, and then you could buy the T-shirt later, which is also pretty amazing. <laughs> but uh, I think the majority of Jackbox games are sort of like I play it once and I'm like, I don't think I'll touch this again. So it depends on whether or not they give us like uh, some of their best hits, but like naughtyfied. That would right. probably be the the move to get me to buy it. Yeah. Um. Also, I don't know of a lot of adult situations like parties where I'm like, let's play a game that talks about. Peepees. You know <laughs> well, I mean, you know, maybe we're a little bit outside of the demographic, but I would say like that's got this has got to be huge for like in college. Like if you're in college yeah, right now, like come on. Um, so you know, I think that's probably more of the market. Um, I, I guess the thing with Jackbox Jackbox games for me is that I feel like I buy them when I'm in a social situation where it's like, Hey, do you guys want to like the last Jackbox pack I bought was because I had people over actively and it's not a big game to download. You buy it, it's downloaded in a few minutes. So, Mm -hmm. um, so like if I find myself in that position, I'll probably buy it in the moment, but it's not something I'm going to go in be like, I'm getting this thing on release. So (laughs) day one. Yes. Day one. (laughs) So, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Fun. Always exciting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so moving right along. So one of my uh, favorite free-to-play games, um, still trying to keep itself alive, keep its active player base high. The Finals is uh, gotten many updates. It's obviously in its new season, and there's lots of content that's been added to the game. But most recently, they are adding a limited time event, and it's a special game mode where I believe it's 5v5, and it's it's an objective-based mode. But once you are dead in the match, you are dead. There is no respawning. Um, so you get a little bit of that, like, uh, competitive, uh, you know, first person shooter that uh, game mode type, like you see in a lot of games, like in Call of Duty, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, not necessarily uh, you know, Apex, but you know, c- kind of in that battle royale vein a little bit. Uh, yeah. may- maybe more of a uh, not Counter Strike, but like a Rainbow Six, you know, where it's like, mm-hmm. okay, we got to work as a team, except it's more wacky. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. Very interesting. I'm glad that the finals is still pumping out the updates. Um, but yeah, are, any any chance you'll pay this a visit? Yeah, I mean, I, the finals has been such a such a positive thing for me. Every time I play it, I'm like, this is fun. Occasionally, I get frustrated because of how good people got very quickly at the finals. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it's it's a such a cool concept, and I'm happy to see that it exists. Like it feels like I feel like the permadeath thing in this game would lead to a lot of cinematic moments like i'm trying and i'm trying to phrase this right way but like when you see people playing competition video games in movies yeah um those like oh i'm dead oh he's out like it makes things that much more dramatic which will be fun uh practically i could see it being a little boring if you were the first person to get like just headshotted out yes <laughs> but, um yeah I- i'm just happy to see that the finals is constantly making new stuff that i, I feel like they're uh they're kind of a smaller game uh do they have an affiliation with ea or is it just like x dice employees um i think it's just x dice employees i do not think that they are owned uh by ea uh but i do not know that for sure Uh, let me let me see if i can look that up Uh, yeah but i mean like they've just been rolling out the new content pretty regularly and i am excited to see that they have the support enough to do so um, I feel like they're kind of 
the unsung hero right now in terms of free new stuff in your video games. Absolutely. Um, as far as like a new up, IP, especially, yes. Yeah. I mean, like, Fortnite's been holding it down, but we've had a couple of games this year that are already like, hey, every couple of weeks, check this out, check that out. And um, I'm, I'm happy with it. Like, also, some of the best, like, combat and destruction in a first-person game yeah. I've ever it's played. It's also like, beautiful it, for being a free-to-play game. It is absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Um, it's jaw-dropping. Like, I remember one of my uh, my best friend, he, he, like, download. I got him to download it because it was free. And he was like, wow, this game is, this is what a free-to-play game looks like nowadays. It's, <laughs> like, dumb about <laughs> it. Uh, Welcome to the year 3008. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. I am on the finals website right now. Um, they are owned by Embark. Oh, okay. Uh, Embark Studios. So, yeah, I think they're their own thing. No affiliation. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Well, um, it would be crazy ironic if EA did the sort of like support thing that they do with certain creators with this team. Mm -hmm. I doubt that'll happen. But, uh, yeah. Great job, guys. Keep keep the updates coming. And um, this might be the thing that pulls me back in. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So pressing right along. Uh, we got some new numbers uh, for Xbox hardware, hardware sales. Um, so obviously a lot of uh, Microsoft stuff gets reported because they trade. Uh, very publicly in the, and they trade publicly in the stock market and uh, a lot of people are very interested in Microsoft stock uh, and so uh, we got some new numbers that indicated how uh, Microsoft's games division or or Xbox specifically is is doing and uh, their hardware sales have been taking and this is a quote a sharp decline uh, and this would line up with, you know, the statement that what Phil Spencer was talking about a couple of months ago, uh, where he was like, we're focusing less on exclusivity. And yeah, that, that lines up a lot. Although that being said, um, you know, their uh, Xbox's game sales are still doing very well. Uh, they're just being held up right now, primarily by Activision and Blizzard. And so that is the majority of their uh, game sales right now is not from Xbox or Game Pass. It is from Activision Blizzard. So, you know, your microtransactions in Overwatch, your Diablos, mm. uh, your Call of Duty. Call of Duty. So yeah. uh, that is the majority of the money that's coming in. So that's, I don't know, that's information. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got I to gotta be honest when you said um, their numbers are taking a sh. I thought you were going to say something else <laughs> other than sharp decline. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I think it's, you know, it's part of Xbox's whole game plan to not have consoles, it feels like. Yeah. Because they are they are trying to make it that you could play Xbox on anything. Like Xbox is now a virtual platform. Game Pass might be the, the new name we call Xbox in a couple of years because it's all about like, oh, you want to play this? You can play it on your phone. You can play it there. You can play it wherever you want. Right. Um, so I'm I'm pretty uh, I guess this is expected news for me, hmm. um, and again like I feel like Game Pass. I remember when Disney Plus first came out, and I was like, man, Disney's just raking in the money, and then they added this thing, and it said like two million people initially bought like uh, uh, it was probably more than that, but let's say it was two million people paid six ninety nine a month for uh, Disney Plus. That was just like an added like 14 million dollars for them every year yeah um just like boom built in and i think game pass can be that if they get enough people onto it and they've been doing a really good job of like having games on there that are appealing to people power world was a great success now you can get any of the fallout games for 20 dollars. you can get the playstation 5 version that's like you know new and upgraded or you can pay 10 dollars and play every fallout game ever <laughs> On Game Pass, I think with the exception of New Vegas, because it's not a uh, technically Bethesda, mm -hmm. maybe it is technically. But anyway, um, I think they're going. They're planning to play a different game now because they lost uh, the pretty important console generation, being the one prior to this console generation. Um, I, I think they're trying to get out of the console game altogether, and to me, this is like just just a version of that like okay we're gonna have just some really valuable ip in terms of studios and publishers so that we don't need to be 
making a Halo every couple of years. Like right. we've got the money coming in, which is a bummer for us because like some really cool things that Microsoft has done in the past. Halo brute force. Right. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> we'll never see things like that again. Sunset Overdrive. Yeah. Now that's just Spider Man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I agree. And I think it speaks to kind of what we predicted a couple months ago when we were originally talking about this is that they are more interested in becoming like a Netflix um, where it's like, yeah, we'll make our own shows. I mean, maybe Netflix probably makes more shows uh, than Microsoft makes games, obviously. But, um, the, you know, they just want to be a provider. Uh, mm-hmm. and as opposed to you know someone who's pushing their own stuff it's like hey we, you know we have our own stuff uh but also game pass is about you know licensing and bringing in all these other games to the subscription service um mm-hmm. and we doing and uh, us doing the administrative work of that so uh, you know you don't have to have your own streaming gaming service or anything like that so yeah um so yeah uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how that, uh, continues to evolve. I'm still very curious about the future of Xbox. Uh, but yeah, what's, uh, what's last up on the, on the news, Phil? Well, I think uh, you're talking about things we predicted. I think we all saw this coming. No <laughs> one at all was surprised by the announcement of Funko Fusion. That's right. It's a Funko pop video game. <laughs> branded by uh, Funko and Universal. Uh, mm-hmm. That's here we go. Got a Funko right here. There we go. There we go. Here, we, here I got, all important. I got Pikachu and then I got LeBron James. There we go. Oh, so. <laughs> and here's my thing. If there's a game where I could play as Pikachu and LeBron James, I'm so in. And I think what this is giving us is the opportunity. <laughs> This does kind of... Okay, so uh, from the look of the game, it is like a graphically enhanced uh, like Lego game type. Yeah. Like that's it, the vibe. The engine looks good. I was very surprised. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very impressive looking. Uh, it's seemingly got a story, but it also seems like it's just sort of like any sort of thing that a Funko Pop has been in can all of a sudden be played. It is on the table. Do what you want to do with it. There's a, a Peabody and the time traveling dog and boy. I can't even remember. They're in the trailer. <laughs> like mm-hmm. Sherman and Peabody. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. There's um, a there's a lot of franchises. It looks like they did a deal with Universal. Like mm-hmm. uh, Jurassic Park or Jurassic World is in the game. He-Man, you know, in the game. I saw like Invincible and l- there's lots of stuff there. So, yeah. The uh some of the some of the notable things from the trailer uh that are like teeny tiny we see Jaws, uh we see like a lot of the protagonists in these games getting killed, which is pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's uh there's also Umbrella Academy reference. Yes. Um, there is, I can't remember his Hot name. Hot Fuzz. Um, Hot Fuzz. There's also the characters from the Mummy getting eaten by like a bunch of scarabs. Mm-hmm. There's the creatures from it. Back so, to the Future. It's it's all it's so much stuff. What I'm wondering about this game is like, what is the audience? Who who are they trying to get here? I think it's it's for kids, obviously. Like, I mean, I mean, like, not saying like as an adult you can't play that game. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, I'm very curious about it myself. But I mean, I think this, I think that uh, similar to other companies, kind of like what Warner Brothers did with Space Jam Two was just like, hey, kids, uh, you were too young for all of these franchises that you don't know about. So let mm-hmm. us tell you about the franchises we own because we're important too. And so yeah. it's like I don't know a lot of you know younger people who know what Back to the Future is. Um, mm-hmm. So and, – and that's unfortunate. Uh, but like that's, that's you know just how it is. And that's how culture and society you know move forward and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely like a, hey, we want to throw a, I'm, I guess, sorry, I'm a little bit scatterbrained, but the, nice. I guess the thing, the whole thing with Funko is that it's a licensing toy anyway. So yeah. if you're going to make a game about it, it's going to be about having all these licensed things in the game. So yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know how, what other way you make a Funko game <laughs> to be honest. Sure. 
the so in the trailer there's a guy talking about like he's been misshapen in the darkness and he's like uh coming to to light i think one of the villains that we see the most is the it creature um mm. or like a derivation of the monster from it yeah um no is it it no not it um five nights of freddy's the thing no the thing okay the thing mm. uh and th- I-, I just feel like that's a little bit mature for kids. Like, there's one part where there's, like, this tentacle monster with the-, the top half of a dude's torso that's, like, all white and zombified with green stuff coming out of his eye. Yeah. There's, like, so much blood in this game um, based on what I've seen. It looks cartoony and cute, but I kind of feel like all the franchises that they're going for are things that kids won't care about. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean... Okay, well, so if it's not for kids, it could just be for the Funko market, like mm-hmm. people who buy Funkos, like, you know, the, the people who go to Hot Topic and mm-hmm. Lunchbox at the mall. Um, so, like, like maybe maybe that's the audience there. I mean, I'll be honest, like, it got me, I don't know if I'm going to buy it, but I was like, I like Funkos, I, you know, I, yeah. I have some, that looks cute. Um, so, <laughs> like, it, yeah, it definitely gives me a very uh, Lego game vibe in its silliness Mm -hmm. i was also surprised by the blood but i think it's i think it might be cartoony enough that you could still get away with an e rating but i'm not sure so it could could be a rated rated t rated t game so yeah i i think it's very interesting and i wonder what they're going to do to like you know with their expansions because it seems like the type of thing that is would be a platform Mm -hmm. Uh, every year we've got like oh these new funkos that came out in the past six months they're featured um, or if there's something where you buy a Funko and you get some specific DLC or you get that character skin in game, whatever they're going to do, they kind of have like the doors are open to them to do some pretty interesting stuff that we haven't seen before. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see it. Although Funko was not the thing that I ever thought like that should be a game. Like I think Lego <laughs> in my brain makes more sense. Cause there's a, <laughs> there's a mechanic. You can actually like play with them as opposed to them just sitting there <laughs> Yeah, 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 but I I don't know. Uh, what Funko's like? What mashup of of like Funko properties would you like to see? I mean, that's I that's a good question, but at the same time, it's just like there's so many different kinds of Funko. Uh, they mm-hmm. they do everything. They do absolutely everything, and so like I collect some Funkos, uh, but I do. Um, you know, I try to, I limit myself so that I, I have one Funko per fandom. And so it's like, I like basketball. That's why I have a LeBron James Funko. I like Pokemon. I have a Pikachu Funko, but I'm not allowed to get any other basketball Funko or Pokemon Funko. Uh, mm-hmm. like I like Star Wars. I have an Obi-Wan Funko. That's it though. Um, <laughs> so like the right, right. Just to my right off screen, I got Obi-Wan, uh, uh, Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. I got uh, Samurai Appa from the last airbender. Uh, Iron Man Very for cool. Marvel. Uh, I got Geralt of Rivia from The Witcher. I got Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. Those are the ones that I got. So I, I'd love to see any mashup of those. Uh, but, you know, that's I feel like that's a lot of legalese. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that Listen, if, if we had a Witcher in Game of Thrones Funko Pop game, I would be very happy. If that's... <laughs> And then, like, LeBron James is also there, too. <laughs> you just want to play multiverses at this point. <laughs> like, I want to play... I guess I do just want to play multiverses. When's that launch again? <laughs> <laughs> I think it comes out... Tomorrow is May, and I think it comes out at the end of May. Something like that. I think it's maybe May 27th, I want to say, off the top of my head. Um, Let me get my LeBron skills back under order. And just, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what a game. Indeed. Um, all right, before we wrap up, uh, there was a large Helldivers update uh, that we're not going to get into every little nitty gritty detail because this is a big update. It's uh, there's no necessary there's not necessarily any new content that's been added to the game uh, aside from the major order where they uh, released a new stratagem. The airburst uh, rocket launcher is now fully available for everyone in Helldivers 2. Uh, but there has been a lot of stuff updated, mostly buffs, but also some nerfs uh, here or there. Um, 
yeah, some some disappointing things and some game balance things. And as they continue to update this game, I just feel that, um, you know, the, the developers, they just want people to not have a meta. They want mm-hmm. there to be all these different ways to play the game. And I think that that's absolutely great. And so it's like, I get that they nerfed your favorite thing, but they did it because you pick your favorite thing every single hell dive you do. And that's not the point of having this giant list of stratagems you can pull from. So how any initial thoughts just on the uh, update, Phil, or if you'd like, like we can just mention some of the uh, weapons that have been specifically updated uh, within the game. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think in general, like, I'm kind of a no nerfs, mostly buffs, especially in a, especially in this type of game where it's Co-op not game. PvP. Yeah, yeah. Sure, you're competing to get the most kills with your friends at the end of it sometimes, uh, but I, I kind of think like the game is already pretty difficult, and sure, there are people soloing it. And I think this is kind of a response to that, where they're trying to make it a little bit more of a team play game. But mm-hmm. I think if someone wants to interact with it in a way where they're soloing the game and they've got the skill to do it, let them. Uh, I kind of would rather just like see the guns get made a little bit better in terms of uh, just being able to output damage because we know you could just have the capacity to throw more robots or more bugs at us. Mm-hmm. Uh, like make the game harder, give us better weapons would be my choice. Uh, but I do admire that they want to fight against the meta or want to fight against like really boring builds that everyone's doing. Right. Um, I do feel like at the point that we were at prior to this, I did see amongst like all of the friends that I played with very varied builds. Um, maybe a few of the same stratagems, but everybody had their thing that they did and they did it well. So it is kind of a bummer to see some of the things like in here, like the Quasar Cannon is getting a double its length recharge, which is, yeah. It's uh, not great. It's not great. It's not great. It doesn't really make it viable for um, drop ships as much um, because, like, you need the anti-tank to be able to do it faster. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, um, but just to, just to list off uh, the weapons that have been updated, and uh, I'll put uh, a list of the patch notes in the description over on our uh, YouTube channel uh, if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, but just a name name of off. So the the crossbow that has been launched in the most recent uh, war bond is getting an update, which was desperately needed uh, because a lot of people did not like it. Uh, we have already brought up the quasar cannon is being updated. The adjudicator is getting an update. Laser cannon, plasma punisher. Arc-12 Blitzer is getting an update. It's also being changed from an electric weapon to an energy weapon. So that's interesting. Uh, the Eruptor is getting updated. Sickle, you're getting less ammo uh, for it. Everybody loves the Sickle. It's one of the best primaries in the game. And uh, But, you know, I, never, I almost never reload it. Uh, and so it makes sense that they're bringing the ammo down. Uh, what else we got? Scythe, Railgun, Heavy Machine Gun is getting a third-person crosshair. I think it desperately needed. Uh, Diligence Counter Sniper, uh, Diligence Redeemer, Peacemaker, Senator, Dagger, Liberator. It's almost every single weapon in the game at this point. Lib- yeah. Liberator Concussive. They have tweaked and added everything. Um, like, that's that's crazy. So, yeah. Good on them for kind of being so, um, I guess, uh, inclusive with it and just kind of like, all right, let's do a little bit of fixing to everything and not just feeling like they're targeting specific weapons. Yeah. Um, I I think that's pretty cool. And I think, you know, ultimately, uh, I I believe the games are art and I believe that this is like their work of art. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind them kind of uh, uh, moderating how we experience it uh, or how it's like sort of intended to be one way that we all grapple with it. Um, and I think this would be a bigger problem for me if Helldivers was not as good as they are about providing us updates, new guns, new war bonds uh, at such a decent clip, you know? Yeah, they've still been pumping this stuff out. So very, very mm-hmm. impressive. Um, but yeah. All right. Well, that is the last story we have for you this week on the GGG podcast. We are running over time, so we got to get out of here, Phil. Um, you think you think this week you're gonna find some uh, find some time to play games, or is there any like games on your to do list of like I gotta find some time to play this specific game this week? 
Um, I do want to play more Fallout. I think that's I'm like I gotta sit down on my PlayStation. Oh no, there is another game. Uh, it did come out and it was on PlayStation. It's um we talked about it um a couple weeks ago. Z- Tales of Kenzaru Zao. Okay. Um, it's it's sort of like a Metroidvania. Oh, um, developed oh. by yes. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a second, it kind of has a title. It sounds like you're in a D&D campaign and you just made that up on the spot as a GM. Uh, but... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I kind of find out the story behind it, how it's um, to, in honor of the, one of the main developer's parents uh, or mm. his father. Um, and the one of the like heads behind the game is an actor who has uh, been on a lot of really cool projects like uh, Raised by Wolves uh, and, and some other cool stuff. And it's just really, everything I've heard about the development of this game is very like positive and uplifting. And like even to the profits of the game, like the, they, they seem to be wanting to help as many people as possible with it. So I want to just play it to, uh, to be a part of that experience and evangelize for it a little bit. So Tales of Kinzaru Zhao is... I'm going to make at least an hour or two for that this week. Right on. Okay. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right. Well, with that, uh, we are out. If uh, you enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and, and or any of our audio uh, podcast outlets like on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. All right, everybody. Have a, have a good week, and we will see you next time. Peace. Peace.